All right. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about it was a topic that Joe came up with that we all kind of fell in love with. The idea of interesting ways to start your projects. Obviously, we're all kind of deep in the middle of projects, or most of us anyway. Um, how do you start a new project? What are some of the interesting ways that uh, people are starting projects these days? And we'll go through a couple of examples of that. So first, we're going to start off with Christopher, followed by Joe, and then a little bit by me. <coughs> cool. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, does anyone else need the Wi-Fi password? It's Indianola two two one all lowercase. Or uh, I guess you get this special little card right there. Enjoy. <laughs> You're special. <laughs> um, welcome everyone. My name is Chris. I'm going to be talking about React specifically tonight and uh, the create React app project that Facebook has put out in order to bundle your Facebook applications. Uh, first off, that's me. Uh, I'm on the internet. Uh, GitHub, Twitter, my website. Uh, if you check out my website, this is literally my website pretty much. So you don't need to check that out. Um, GitHub though, I've been making a lot of like little React, weird little React stuff um, over the past year. So definitely check out my GitHub. Uh, there's hit projects such as freedirtalert.com. Uh, it scrapes Craigslist for free dirt and then just post dirt. So it's a React app, it's pretty cool. Um, and then I've like built a card game and whatnot, so definitely check that out. So tonight, once again, we're talking about building with React. So when you go to reactjs.org and you check out like the beginning how-to, uh, you'll see that the way that they first initially introduced React to people is with a single HTML file. Um, it's obviously the simplest way to go about building a website. Uh, index.html file with a few script tags on it, and then write your JavaScript inside the script tags if you need to. Um, unfortunately, we live in a day and age where JavaScript is changing very quickly. Everyone wants to write cool, nice, modern JavaScript, so now we need bundlers and everything else to transpile the code, and uh, it can get a little bit tedious trying to set up those workflows in those environments. Um, when all you want to do is build an application. Um, so, Facebook came out with their own project called Create React App, which is essentially a CLI, a tool on the command line that you can run in order to bootstrap a React application. And once you do that, it will install all of the dependencies that you'll need in order to run React. Um, and then it will hide it all behind a single dependency called React Scripts so that you never have to worry about any of the Babel versions, the Webpack versions, the ESLint versions, everything else. Um, <laughs> Create React App is already taking care of that for you. Uh, some of the other ones that exist, I just want to mention them here quickly. Um, NWB is a packet, or I don't know what you would actually call it, a toolkit. Um, it works with React, it also works with all the other frameworks. Um, it's a really nice little CLI tool that uh, will help you get a project up and running in whatever framework you want. Uh, I've used it specifically where Create React App excels at you know, bundling an application uh, when you need to just ship a single React component off to NPM or whatever. You usually find yourself uh, transpiling it with Babel. You have to have your Babel config all set up properly. Make sure you have all the plugins and the transforms and everything else. Um, NWB handles that for you. Uh, I don't know what stage they support up to, but like, it's configurable, it's nice, easy to use. Um, Neutrino is another project that's out there. I haven't used this one, but it's put out by Mozilla. Uh, it's supposed to be more flexible than Create React App is. So if you do need to add certain things or configure it in a way that Create React App is actually pretty opinionated, um, that could be an option. Uh, the next two on the list, Next.js and Razzle, those two are both uh, special in the sense that they come with server-side rendering support. So with your traditional React app, you're like at the top, you're shipping an index file with some script tags, and then your React code is gonna go ahead and render itself to just a single div on the page there. Uh, with Next.js and Razzle, since they're doing the server-side rendering, it's compiling the React on the server so that when it ships it down to the client, 
the user is already getting a full HTML page with all of the content on it without having to parse through the JavaScript, at which point it will go ahead and hydrate the state if you're pulling in server data, uh, everything else. I haven't used either of those. Um, I've heard really good things about Next.js though. So if you are interested in server-side rendering with React, definitely give that a look. Uh, Gatsby I threw on here, it's a popular static uh, site generator, but it also uses React uh, to build the components and pages and everything else. Um, and then obviously you can roll your own config. You can set up your package JSON and install all the Babel everything and Webpack everything, or roll up however you do that. Um, personally, I use Create React App, which is why I'm here to talk about it. Um, Facebook introduced it, probably been a good year, year and a half, um, but they introduced it to kind of try and help people with the whole JavaScript fatigue thing that was happening. Um, every, all these different tools were updating continuously, yet developers weren't able to kind of stay on track of updating all their dependencies as well as keeping their app in line. Um, so Facebook came out with the CLI that makes it so you've just got that single dependency, uh, you don't have to do any of the configuration, and then if you do need flexibility in the future, they ship it with an escape hatch. So you can eject out of their React scripts package, at which point it'll copy all of the React scripts dependencies into your package JSON, um, it will update your like different node scripts that will run, um, and I'll show an example of that here in a minute. So to get started, we're just going to run a little demo here. Um, initially, you need to install the Create React App CLI globally, um, and so I, I call it crap. Well, I call Create React App just crap for short, and I love that. That's the app. I'm sure, they love that. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's far from crap, though. It's amazing. Uh, so, create React app Phoenix.js. And so it's going to go ahead and create a new directory. It's going to install the packages that it needs, um, which, as you can see, there's only three packages that it needs React, React DOM, and then the React scripts, which holds literally everything else. And that's going to do its thing, and then we're good to go. So we can cd into the directory, and we can check out what we have here. So we have a source directory with our index.js, which holds our React code to render the app. <coughs> and then our package JSON looks like this. Just those three dependencies, and then a few scripts that we can run. A start script for development, a build script for actually building the entire application, test script for running any test that you write. Um, they have documentation on how to configure your test, but generally it just takes the .test extension. Um, I think it uses Jest. I'm terrible at writing tests, please don't judge me. I have never written a React test in my life. Um, but it's there if I ever want to write one. That's all it would take. Um, and then the last part is the eject function. So, for example, if we wanted to go ahead and yarn run build, it's going to take our little hello world app that we have and it's going to go ahead and bundle it. It's going to make it all optimized. If you are importing different dependencies, um, it's using Webpack under the hood. So it will handle the tree shaking for you. Um, that was a big deal when Webpack 2 came out. Uh, so Create React App existed initially on Webpack 1. So you didn't actually get tree shaking out of the box. Uh, so if you were importing Lodash and you were using like curlies, like import get from Lodash, it would, when you bundled your app, it would bundle the entire Lodash library with your application. Um, now with tree shaking, it will pull the get function out of the Lodash package and only send that to your bundle. So you can see here that it will report what it actually built. Uh, in this case, since it's such a simple app, we only have a single JS file and a single CSS file. Uh, if you were doing code splitting inside of your application using just the dynamic import syntax, um, it would go ahead and automatically split and make a bunch of different uh, bundles for you. 
So you'd have main and then you'd have different chunks depending on uh, how many split points you have in your application. Uh, the other part, well, I guess I probably should have done this. I don't know if I'm assuming that most people have at least heard of React. This is the demo app that it runs. Not that exciting. Um, I created an application for easy PHP last night. Um, and it exists, uh, it's on my uh, GitHub page. But it was a simple Spotify demo that uses uh, authentication with Spotify's web API, pulls you back into an app, and gives you the ability to search by <laughs> artist, at which point you know you get a little loading thing, returns a list, you can click into one of them, you get an artist view with some more songs, you click into an album, at which point you get the album, and then we live coded in and it actually worked and I was amazed. Someone had made like a little Spotify player React widget. So we just like NPM installed this React widget, React Spotify widget and uh, managed to hook it up. And so it, it worked last night. Uh, yeah, it's gotta have, so it's gotta have Spotify open in the background. So it's might be whatever. But um, that's available on my GitHub if you want to uh, check it out, uh, and it can kind of give you an idea of how I went about structuring a React application. Um, a million different ways you can go about it, and through all the different projects that I've made, um, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, but the bottom line is that like all four of these are running with Create React app, and it's been really nice because I get to focus just on the applications that I'm building. I don't have to worry about the build configurations anymore. Don't have to worry about getting SAS to compile anything like that. Uh, can just start writing React <coughs> applications from the get-go. So, one more thing here is I'm gonna run the eject command, which you can see here it says, are you sure you wanna eject? It's permanent. Um, that's because it's gonna rewrite the package JSON and a bunch of other stuff. And so we say yes. And you can see that it wrote a bunch of dependencies, removed the React scripts, replaced the different React scripts things with Node scripts, and that was that. So now our project looks like this big old package JSON, which you, when you were initially starting with React a couple of years ago, you would end up like going through line by line and adding all of these different uh, loaders as you needed them. Now we live in a day and age where people who enjoy doing that, and I'm sure there's people who enjoy doing that around here too. I enjoyed it for a few months, and then I was like, eh, not enjoying it anymore. Let's let other people work on that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it uh, in a nutshell. Does anyone have any questions about uh, the Create React app or React itself? Are you using the latest Create React app? Uh, I think so. When you were hovering over that dependency, it was like two majors behind. Oh, what was that? Uh, oh, no, that was a Babel <laughs> dependency that it was looking at. Uh, I thought it was the Jest dependency, but. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And that was like, I think it said like Jest 20 versus 22. Yeah. Um, I installed it globally like a couple days ago, so they pushed an update, whatever. Um, yeah. Any, Joe? Yeah, so um, how. Extensible is uh, create React app stuff uh, without ejecting, I guess. So I've had a pretty good time working with it. I know that initially, um, like it didn't have SAS support. So if you had a project that was using React and you wanted to convert it to create, or if you had a project and you were doing like Webpack SAS load or stuff like that, then that could be a problem. Uh, they've added support for it since then. Uh, the documentation on create React app is really good um, so this is the documentation you can see that like they've these are a million different things that you may have a question on and they have individual sections for everything so if you're <coughs> curious about how code splitting I should make that bigger um, if you're curious about how code splitting is going to work while you're using create react app they've got an example and it shows you hey we're using the dynamic import syntax, and it returns a promise, and that promise resolves to the namespace object of the module. Um, and so you can kind of see here how you would do it 
in React code, and then you can throw it into your own application, and there you go. You probably want to do it from a new application now versus an existing one you had, because it's, I think, pretty biased about like the folder structure and stuff like that, unless you eject. Okay. With what? The folder structure and like just drop oh. it into another application. Um, oh yeah, so if you wanted to bring Create React App into an existing application, um, you would need like that entry point to be there, but it it would it shouldn't be too gnarly. Um, but yeah, it would require a specific configuration. So, so what what features? So you mentioned that it didn't have SAS. It sounds like it does. What sort of features does it come with out of the box? I don't. What does it come with out of the box? Yeah, or what have you found useful? I guess. Um, I found not having to touch Webpack the most useful. Of course. Uh, which I think a lot of people did. Um, I mean, now it has support for Flow, TypeScript is, well, I just lied. It has, Create React App has Flow support. You can integrate Flow with it. If you want TypeScript, there's actually a Create React App TypeScript project that you would need to run. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a fork of the React scripts that adds TypeScript support. Um, but I know that that's like a huge thing now, uh, is adding types to your applications. Um, yeah, I mean, the build configuration stuff is probably just the biggest part of Create React App that's made it really nice and easy to use. Uh, when I was working, I worked at Synapse, and it's an agency out of Tempe, and so we were bringing on new clients every month, and new projects all the time, and so we had an existing configuration that we would use, and we, would, you know, that goes on each project, but then as it updates, uh, or as projects like go out the door, they never see updates again. Um, now it's really nice with Create React App. We're not concerned about any of that because Facebook is maintaining it. They're doing a very good job with like keeping React scripts up to date, pulling in latest Webpack versions, pulling in latest of all the different testing frameworks, uh, keeping it nice and fast. Uh, so yeah, so not having to worry about that and being able to maintain the applications for longer has been really, really nice. Cool, anything else? Anyone else? Nice, thank you very much. Cool. Uh, I have no slides, so I'm just going to use a couple of uh, websites as my slides, and I'm going to live code a bunch of stuff. I hope everybody's cool with that. Uh, I'm, I'm Joe, um, so I'll kind of mention it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have stuff to add to that. I work at Elastic. Um, my handle basically everywhere is Weeble. Uh, if you see me on the, um, the AZ Web Dev Slack, that is my handle there. Um, with very few exceptions, if you see Weeble on the internet, that is me. Uh, so I am going to talk about a tool called Poi. Uh, Poi is very similar to Create React App, although it is not necessarily designed only to work with React. It's, uh, it's quite a bit more generic. So it takes care of all the, the Babel stuff, all the Webpack configuration, um, hot mods reloading, building, running uh, Webpack dev server, um, you can mock out APIs, all that sort of stuff. Um, but it doesn't necessarily prescribe you to any sort of front end framework. There's some presets uh, that will help you get started with specific frameworks, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but at its core, Poi is just about making web development easier, uh, particularly making it easier to get started with. So the best way to show um, how it works or why it makes things easier uh, is to actually use it. So if we look at the getting started guide, uh, we see here, hopefully folks in the back can read this. Yes, awesome. Um, it tells us here, uh, we need to install Poi globally, uh, or we can install it uh, locally, which is the preferred method. That is also the way that I prefer to do it. Um, is this gonna work? 
I'll change the theme here. Oh, I didn't like. Shoot, I don't remember how to actually change the one I'm using. Can I do this? No. <laughs> Anybody have any idea how to make this it? not black? I turn. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, I turn. It's been like. 10 make years. this default. All right. Hey. This will work. Is that more readable? Yes. A little bigger. Cool. Um, close that guy. I'm going to. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do is just install Poi. I have uh, this project set up, which is literally uh, just a package JSON file. This is all that's in it. Um, I just did a yarn in it dash y, which is just answer yes to all the questions that it's going to ask you. Uh, and this is what it gives me. So there's no dependencies. Uh, I basically just have a name, which is based on the folder it was in, uh, and some information that it pulled from my Git account. And otherwise, uh, it's pretty straightforward. What I'm going to do is um, add as a dev dependency uh, the POI package. I'm also, while I'm in here, I'm just going to load uh, less and the, the plus loader. Um, I'll explain why a little bit later. Um, but POI is the only piece of this that you need. Uh, we're going to install as a dev dependency because we don't actually, uh, we're, we're not going to bundle this in our build or anything. This is just a thing that we're going to use in development. And in a second, when this is done, cool. Now if we look at uh, our package JSON file, we have the dependencies that we just installed here. And I'm, it, it doesn't, uh, so I like create React app, it doesn't really give you anything. Um, it doesn't bootstrap your uh, application with a bunch of scripts and uh, helpers and stuff that way. You use poi by just running the poi command. Um, the easiest way to do that is to use, and I'm going to assume that I need to move this up so people can read it. Um, NPM ships with a tool called npx, which you can use to just execute uh, local packages, local NPM packages. This isn't specific to poi or anything, this is just generic node stuff. Um, so I'm going to use that to run the poi command. And when I do that, uh, we see here it's, uh, oh, I don't have an index.js file. So, um, the only thing that's required to actually get started is uh, an entry file. We don't have an entry file. All I have is this package JSON file. And I have in my package JSON file, uh, by default, um, my main is just the, the index.js file in the root of the project. So I'm going to go ahead and create uh, an index.js. It doesn't necessarily have to have anything in it yet. Um, and to understand what this is going to do, uh, let me jump ahead a little bit. So POI ships, uh, basically all it's doing is taking the, uh, the entry point, running it through Webpack, running it through Babel, uh, and then running all of that code. It basically is injecting it into a template that it ships with by default. This is that template. Um, there's not a lot of really important stuff here except for this bit here. So it's going to give us a div with an ID of app, and we can use that to inject, um, say, our React app or View app or whatever. Um, into the page, right? Which will it will just uh, bundle up and do for us automatically. So all we need to do is I'm not even going to use any sort of framework here. I'm just going to get elements by the app, uh, assign that to a thing, and let's say uh, app enter HTML, make it nice and big. Hello world, right? Pretty straightforward. So all I'm doing is uh, selecting that uh, app div that it's going to uh, give us automatically. It's going to run our script automatically as well. Uh, it will select that div and then set the contents of that div. So if I save this and then run poi, we'll see that it's using the entry point uh, from the package.json file. It does the build and it says I'm ready to go. It also tells us what URL uh, it's going to be hosting it on and it says copied it. This is actually already in my clipboard. So I can just paste that in there. And bam, my application works. Um, what's really neat is that if I, more impressive if I do this, uh, if I change this, um, say PhoenixJS, and save this, it will actually update the site automatically. This isn't actually hot module reloading. It does uh, support hot module reloading, but I'm not using any sort of framework that it knows how to do uh, automatic reloading on. So all it does is I, it says, I don't know what to do, I'm just going to reload the site for you. But in this case, it's enough uh, that we don't have to go back to the browser to, to see um, the changes that we're making. Um, they just happen, we save them, and it reloads the site. So that is super useful. Uh, but more interestingly, um, we can use some frameworks, right? Chances are you want to get started uh, using React. Um, 
maybe you want to play around with whatever the hot new framework of the week is. Uh, maybe you want to touch Riot or Svelte or Inferno or Preact or whatever. Um, it's it doesn't uh, again it doesn't prescribe anything. Uh, you can pull all these things in and use them directly. Uh, any modules that you're pulling off of NPM, you can just import directly. Um, the the settings that it has uh, support import export ES6 modules, uh, supports async await, it supports uh, basically all of the new ES6 features that you'd want to use. You don't have to worry about how it does any of that stuff to get started. Um, it also ships with view support out of the box. So you don't have to do anything if you're building a view app, you just you use POI straight up. So it tells us uh, if we dump uh, this view thing in our index.js file, it should run. And we should probably take a moment and look at what this is actually doing. So this is pulling in view, uh, which happens to be a dependency of POI itself, so we don't have to install it ourselves yet. Um, it will, uh, if you're not familiar with view syntax, view, um, the object that, or the configuration that you give it is basically telling it how to instantiate a view application. And one of the pieces that you can give it is this uh, EL property, and you can give it a CSS selector to tell it where to mount the application. So much like when we did our um, uh, get element by ID before and we were just injecting some HTML. We're telling Vue that we want to mount to this, uh, this app, because again, uh, Poi is injecting this div with this app ID. Uh, and what we want to do is just call this render function, which uh, again is much like the app we had before, it's just going to have this h1 tag with the hello world in it. And if we go back to the browser and look at the site, we see that, hey, it worked. We didn't even have to restart Poi or anything because we have that uh, automatic refresh going on in the background. And much like we had before, if we make changes here, we see that they uh, occur automatically in the background. <laughs> um, however, much like before, uh, if I make a change and save it, again, I'm not actually getting hot module reloading. Um, Vue does support hot module reloading. The problem is we're changing the main entry point uh, for our Vue app. And so because it, it can't basically just restart that app without rebuilding the entire uh, front end, it, basically aborts again and uh, reloads the page. So we can do this a little bit better and we can drop into view single file components. Uh, again, if you don't know how Vue works, it does not matter. All you need to know is that we're gonna import some component from some path and then we're going to render said components uh, in our application. Of course, that means that we have to go and create um, that component. View components uh, look a bit like uh, web components, if you're familiar with them. They just have a, a bit of a template script, and then you slap some HTML in there, and that's it. So now we have this app component. Uh, we reload this here. We see that in the background that it changed, and it updated, and whatever things are going on. However, this time it's not refreshing the page. Um, so if I go and save that and go back here, we see that it actually was able to, to hot reload this which also means that I can start doing some cool stuff. So Vue also lets us uh, inject style tags because again, these are much like web components. Um, we can just start writing some CSS in here. So let's do a little, little background color uh, black and a little color white uh, because we just want to invert everything. And it just works. I didn't have to refresh the browser. Uh, everything's hot module reloaded. Pretty neat. Um, and if you're interested in learning Vue, this is a fantastic tool for getting started, as you can see. Um, any questions so far? So it has Vue out of the box, is that, that means it, it installed it behind you? Yeah, it's a, so one of Poi's dependencies is Vue. Oh, okay. uh, and it does that just to have Vue support out of the box. It doesn't actually use Vue as part of what it's doing. Okay. Any other questions? So is another one benefit of over um, create React app, the fact that you can use it with any other, like any other build, or yeah, pretty much. Uh, so it's yeah, it's, it's very generic, right? Create React app is only for creating <laughs> React apps, as you can probably imagine from the name. Um, yeah, Poise, it's just this generic like uh, experiment uh, tool. So you can you can do React apps in Poi, uh, which I'll show you next. Um, there's also a create React or Create Poi React app, I think it's called, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically like a Create React app, but it uses Poi instead of the uh, tools that Create React app ships with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Is you you have uh, a little more flexibility um, to to do whatever it is you want to do. You're not necessarily bound to using React. Mm -hmm. Do you want to use this a lot? 
Uh, quite a bit recently, yeah. Every any time I need to like proof of concept something, I just fire this up. And any, anything weird? Any ed, anything you would just be like, no, I'm not using this again. Not no, not that fun. Cool. I, I of course I, everything I've been building is like proof of concept stuff. No, no, I've no, gotten super deep with it. That's where you get into problems, right? I suppose that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring up a login form. It's not working. Yeah. That's cool. Is there a notion of like a plain script for like minification? There stuff? is. Uh, and I will show that right now. So uh, much, so we saw with pre React app, um, not only can you run it, you can also build your application. Poi has the same thing. Uh, you just run Poi build. And what this is gonna do uh, by default, it will use your entry point and it will uh, kick it out into a dist directory. And we see here that it's given us uh, a whole bunch of files. So this is actually splitting uh, our vendor files up. Anything that's coming out of node modules is throwing in a vendor's mm -hmm. file. Uh, our application, the stuff that we wrote, is actually in this client file. Uh, it builds a manifest for us for um, like bookmarking and making your saved um, website look more like an app, at least on Android. Um, it does uh, all of our source map stuff. It split out the CSS that we wrote into a separate CSS file. And the HTML file that it built uh, will actually load all of these things automatically for us. Um, I don't know a better way to format this. Do you look prettier? I do, but it, does it work on? It should work on HTML. Beautiful. Oh, wait, are you in? Are you oh, because it, it's not set up to work on HTML. I <laughs> uh, mean, I can trick it and be like, hey, this is JavaScript. <laughs> and then I can use prettier. Oh, it's format. That's why. And it doesn't do anything. <laughs> uh, so we could, well, whatever. Uh, so the important part, well, I could open this in the browser too. Uh, the important part I want to note is that in the. Um, Whatever we have our whatever. I'm just gonna load this in a browser because this would be a hell of a lot easier. Uh, and to do that, uh, I'm gonna use a just a, uh, a tool called SuperStatic. It's just a way to like host um, static files locally. I'm gonna have it host the disk directory because that's where it, it uh, created the build for us. And this thing hosts on a little different port and doesn't automatically copy for us. But anyway, um, so this is the application in its built form. And if we look at the source, we see that um, even though in our, in our view component we wrote some styles and stuff, you might expect that to be injected um, as JavaScript or something. It's not. It actually, uh, the way that it's configured Webpack, it will split out CSS into a separate CSS file and load it like real CSS, uh, which also means that if I turn off JavaScript, it will still load the CSS because uh, it's just CSS. Um, it's loading our application and um, and we see, like, by default, if I don't have JavaScript enabled, I just have this, like, the app entry point that we saw before. Uh, of course, when I have JavaScript enabled, view runs and replaces that with uh, itself. So now we have this build. Uh, we can go deploy this to um, maybe GitHub Pages or Netlify or any sort of static host that we want. Um, it's that simple. Uh, there's a whole ton of configuration that Poi supports. So. Uh, create React app has the eject node um, concept, right? So if, if I can't get as far as I want with create React app, I can abort and just start doing my own thing, right? Um, Poi, as far as I know, I haven't seen it mentioned in the documentation, I don't believe Poi has a way to eject, but it does have a way to um, extend the things that it's doing. So if you want to inject um, custom Webpack plugins or custom figure configuration, you want to change where it's putting the static files or how it's naming things or whatever, um, it allows you to do all that stuff. There's this huge array of different stuff that it supports. Um, it supports uh, post-CSS out of the box, less SAS, basically anything you might want to use, uh, it has support for. All you need to do is uh, install the dependencies like we did with this less and less loader, um, which I meant to show you in this app. <laughs> if I had changed this to you know, lang less, it would have actually let me write less here and compile that, but I'm too far down, I can't go back. Um, but there's, uh, where is this stuff? So the Webpack stuff. So you can actually inject uh, your own plugins. You can give it custom uh, Webpack stuff to use as well. So you don't actually have to eject out of it. You have some hooks to actually extend and get additional functionality that Poi doesn't give you out of the box, uh, which is pretty slick. It will, uh, it copies stuff, but it does a ton of stuff. Um, but it's, I just saw it's a great way to just get started with the thing, right? Um, they also have a number of different presets. Um, if we go and click on that link and open the site, we can see the, I don't know, not huge but sizable list of different presets you have. So 
So you want to kick around and learn some Elm. There's a preset for learning Elm. Uh, <laughs> set up Parma testing. Uh, it's got offline support preset. And you can actually use uh, a bunch of these at, at one time as well. Um, mix and match them. So if I want to mix, uh, whatever, start up a story, storybook project and like set up ESLint and do a bunch of different stuff, uh, it's got a bunch of presets to make that much faster than trying to do all that stuff by hand. Um, let's take a look at the React one. Since we saw a React demo before, we might as well see another React demo, right? Uh, so all it takes to use one of these presets is to uh, install it, and then a lot of times they'll have dependencies as well. Uh, so again, because Poi doesn't ship with anything except for Vue, uh, if we want to write in React, we have to uh, install React dependencies ourselves. So we'll go ahead and react, uh, add those, and we'll also, when that's done, add uh, this preset as a dev dependency. Um, so this will... Actually, what I, the other thing I'm going to do is yeah, we don't need this anymore at all. We can get rid of this source directory if I can click correctly. Uh, we don't care about the disk anymore. Cool. So while well, we have some dependencies in here, um, we didn't really need these less dependencies anymore, but it doesn't really matter. Um, the other thing that we need to do is tell Poi to use the preset. And it, it's a little bit vague, uh, the documentation, unfortunately. Um, it's kind of a mix of looking at the getting started thing, which talks about how to have a uh, uh, POI config file. And basically, in that config file, all you're going to do is export uh, an object that defines the presets that you want to use. And then in the documentation for the presets, it tells you basically <laughs> what to put in there. So we're going to create a POI.config.js. Uh, and this is just going to um, export this object it has a preset config, uh, which is just an array of the presets that we want to use. In this case, we just want to use the React preset. So now that we've told Poi, uh, now that we've installed that preset and told it to use that preset, we can start to use React. And a lot of these presets also have an example uh, in their code base. So if we take a look at the React example, uh, we can just copy this wholesale and save a little bit of time. So this is uh, just a really simple React app. Uh, it's going to pull this root container, which uh, I didn't copy yet. I'm actually just, whatever, I'm going to call this app because that's what I call my entry points in like all of my things. And we're going to put it in a different location. Uh, the other thing to note is that um, while Poi does have hot module support built in, it doesn't necessarily know, like for React apps, you have to kind of manually hook that up yourself. Um, the example, fortunately, has that part in it. Um, so simply by copying and pasting the example that it gave us, we have hot module reloading now. Um, let me change this path as well. And now if we go ahead and create uh, our app JS here, and here we're gonna um, import React from React, and we're going to export um, whatever. We can just make this assumption because I'm not gonna do anything fancy with it. Uh, and in fact, we can just return the component, and here uh, we can do our trusty hello world example again, because who doesn't like seeing hello world over and over again? Uh, and again, if we just fire up Poi, uh, we'll go ahead and build the application for us. We see that it's created all of the uh, pieces that we need. Again, it's just through the URL in my clipboard, so I can just go ahead and load uh, that. and. Let's see here, uh, as I make changes to this, that gets hot miles reloaded, I don't even have to reload anything. Uh, so now I'm ready to start playing around with React. Um, most recently I used this to play around with uh, a library called Redux First Router, uh, just an alternate to the Redux ro or React Router. That is, oh shoot, which water yeah, is that? I have no idea. Oh. I'm gonna get drink new water in a moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how you just one offsets the other. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, most recently I used this to play around with uh, Redux first router because I was curious how it worked. Um, thank you. So I did install uh, React, Redux, all that sort of stuff, and getting it up and running was just as simple as setting up that preset and installing everything. Yes. Why don't they auto load the presets? So you have to, um, I don't know, I, I think it's just to keep the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, 
the overhead or surface area of using it smaller. Um, so you just pull in the, the like functionality that you need. Um, no, no, no. I mean, so you had to create a config file mm -hmm. to say use this preset. Yeah. Where oh, I see. You just and read the package <coughs> JSON and right. say these are the things that are, that start with whatever our what was it called point point preset point right? Preset, whatever, like, yeah. Uh, regex on that and then load those ones. I noticed that you some of them had options, but mm -hmm. I'm guessing that the options aren't really used because they're presets, right? Yeah, so the options mostly are, um, uh, it's not gonna work. Um, yeah, there's usually not a lot of options. Most of it's just like passing through to like the Webpack loader or something like that. Um, you, yeah, in theory, it could say like, look, I, I see that you've installed all these uh, presets, whatever. Um, you could also do that automatically here. I mean, this is just a uh, yeah. It's just it was it's just a note thing, right? So you a, could. It was just weird that you had to create another another file for True. it. True. When when it seems other than passing options, but yeah. So this is also the place that you would set up other uh, configuration bits as well. Yeah. Um, so less, less friction. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, I just to use a preset would be nice if I didn't need to build this create this config file. I agree. Um, Pierre's welcome, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know why it's a hard requirement. It would be nice if it was automatic, but. What does the index to guess look like on the uh, preset? Like how hard is it to build a preset? Uh, it looked somewhat easy. Uh, the documentation has a thing about how to, like, so most of the preset page is about how to actually build a preset. So this thing's like, yeah, if you want to you know, use it, here's a link to a bunch, and here's how you uh, include them. And then like, here's all the little bits <clears throat> that you, excuse me, that you need to actually build a preset. What is the reaction um, like? Let's take a look. So that is the preset. Uh, so it looks like, yes, yeah, so we, we set up some Babel rules. Um, yeah, just some other JSX overrides for POI. Uh, I'm not sure what this bit's doing here. But yeah, pretty simple. 29 lines code. Pretty cool. <clears throat> but what does Poi do? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. It tastes like crap. But it does. Is Poi a thing? Yeah, it's a... Uh, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> it's a Hawaiian dish. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not good. All right. It's not good. Like, don't, don't bad the refried food. beans. It's like some taro? That's a, a root vegetable that grind it down. Like, weird paste stuff. Yeah. Like a, it's not, it doesn't look appealing either. It's like, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's not good. It's, like, it's, like, it's, it's like, weird probably the worst thing on the luau. Like, like, something like the way it tastes, like, it, like, it's weird. <laughs> All right, so terrible, terrible dish name or project app. <laughs> Here we are. Um, so you'll note, um, the kind of difference between Poi and Create React app is that um, again, Poi doesn't really give you any sort of like setup out of the box. Um, and my whole thing is like, I, I basically just want to run like one command and get started. So it would be nice if I could um, build a Poi thing into some sort of scaffold, perhaps. And that is going to be my segue into <laughs> passing things off to Sap. Thanks. <laughs> a tool called Sal. Sal is a scaffolding tool that Joe actually turned me on to. Um, it's a tool that you can use to build your own scaffolding. Let's say you're not really too keen on Create React App, you're not too keen on Poi, you have a folder structure and a project structure that you fell in love with a long, long time ago and you want to keep it forever, right? Sal allows you to use that project structure. So let's talk about what that means. Um, standard kind of thing, you install it globally. Um, you run Sal. Username slash repo, so it pulls on GitLab, GitHub, whatever it needs to, um, to determine what uh, you know that folder structure is, and then just kind of runs it. So I'm going to go ahead and run a template that actually Joe built. I'm going to say I got it up here somewhere. Sal Weevil slash template node uh, module, and then uh, the folder to dump it into space node. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. This is going to download 
the template. I actually already had a cache. It's going to download the template and ask me a series of questions. Okay, what is the name of your project? We'll call it Node. Uh, how would you describe the project? Sure, my name, my GitHub user. Uh, notice that all these things are pre-populated. What version of Node am I targeting? I'll say eight. Um, yes, I'd like the runtime. It has interesting defaults. It's asking me questions. I'm giving responses, and um, let's see what it does with that. Sure, the use one tools. I can go ahead and use arrow keys. Uh, test run ashore, initializing, running an npm install, copying a bunch of files, and then dumping me out in my uh, node directory. So, just real quick, I don't know if I missed this. Are those questions from the template node module, or are those? We'll say from the. Okay. That's the magic. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what this dumped out. Uh, I don't have my code set up. Cool. So I can say code dot. So that dumped me into, not the right folder. So, no, open. That created this directory for me. This directory has a couple of interesting things. It has a readme, has an index.js, source, node modules, package.json, right? All kinds of stuff. Where did this stuff come from? Well, it came from Joe's head. Let's take a look at what I installed, the Weeble template node module. This is a SAL package template, I guess you could say. Um, contains a couple of things, everything you would expect. You get ignore package JSON, which uh, really just contains, uh, I guess, SAL. Um, contains a SALJS file and a template folder. These are the two magical pieces. SALJS. SALJS exports an object with a bunch of prompts. Project. What was your uh, name of the project, right? It has, again, interesting defaults. It could default to the folder name. It could default to the git user. It uses a tool called Inquirer, uh, this fancy tool, which is basically the question answer uh, module that it's using to do all the magic. It's doing all of that, taking my answers, um, storing them as variables on some kind of magical object uh, to finally pump out to my template folder which again came from Joe's head, it's his folder structure. It's a folder structure that he found interesting for his template, uh, for his node modules. Um, inside of there, we have a bunch of uh, ESM template replacers that will read the object that I uh, answer the questions for, run logic on them, run file replace and uh, name replace and that kind of thing, and pump out the file accordingly. That's it. Um, so, again, just to reiterate, you have an interesting project structure that you use for every node project that you uh, do. Don't copy it from one directory to another. Just simply run or build a uh, style template to do it for you, right? And it'll do all the interesting replacements. It can do conditionals using the templating language. Um, all the things that you would expect to be in an interesting templating language to pump out all of your files in one fell swoop. Um, so again, Joe turned me on to this uh, sometime last week, and I kind of fell in love with it because I'm kind of old and crusty, right? I, I enjoy my interesting folder structures that I've been using forever. So I'm now able to do it, again, without having to go to the last project that I worked on, copy all the latest junk out of it, and then pump it into here. Um, I was able to just build an interesting template that asks all the questions that I needed it to ask uh, to build whatever I needed it to build. Um, so that was a couple of interesting uh, options in the object. Uh, the most interesting ones are enforce new folder, uh, install dependencies, you can run git in as it. You also get a post Things that happen afterwards, you can modify the directory even further if you need to, you can write some interesting stuff to the console, stuff like that. Um, it's not super magical, it just kind of works. Uh, and it works in a really seamless way that allows you to run very fast. Um, obviously the templates are trivial to build, you get to ask interesting questions and then pump out a bunch of code at the end, whatever that code is. It's not a JavaScript specific thing, it's a template kind of framework that you can run with uh, as quickly as possible. That's the gist of it, does anybody have any questions? Um, as far as like, so this is for starting a new project, Correct. having a template, copying it over. Do they have anything for like, if you were to update your template, and you want to pull those changes down? Or I they... doubt it. Okay. I sincerely doubt it. It's <laughs> not the point, not no. the point of style. Yeah, I can't imagine the implications of having to do that. It really, it's, I mean, the whole project, the cell project is like a thousand lines of code. Okay. It's like ridiculously trivial. It's truly just a question asker followed by a file copper, uh, copier and template manager. Um, but in that, in its simplicity, is like where the magic is. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, if you're familiar with Yeoman, 
Uh, so yeah. it's really, really similar, but way easier to use. Yeah, it allows you to build, again, things like your Create, uh, create React app. Um, you can build it to your specifications, you know, based on the project. You want to extend your, how your questions work and that kind of thing. Um, this question thing I was actually turned on to along the way, Inquirer, which is basically everything you saw. It's the act of asking these questions, getting the answer. It has interesting defaults. It has interesting um, uh, ways to query and then use the variables and further questions and that kind of thing. It's uh, really powerful, and they just kind of used it wholesale. Cool. Cool.